Okay, it's day 76 of this honeydew germination experiment. So there's been more growth, and these seedlings are doing well. This one has escaped its seed husk. It's displaying phototropism. It's working on its first true leaf. And here you have the other one, and it's also working on its first true leaf. So this is a plant that fell over. It's one of the three largest, and it has a third generation tendril. Here's the second one. And here you have the first generation tendril, and that just kind of coiled around nothing after it drooped down, which was a few days ago when I watered. So in terms of growth, there's been a lot more. So in terms of growth, there's a lot more leaves now, but they don't seem to be getting all that much bigger. It's just that there are more of them, and the stems keep growing, and the vines keep elongating. So I'm seeing tendrils going everywhere, but none of them are really long enough to reach any of the other plants and curl around them. I'm assuming these tendrils have a mechanism by which they can recognize self and non-self. So hopefully it's not just something where they only recognize other species to curl around, but you know maybe they have a detection system to differentiate their own cells uh, from other cells. So if they whip and touch another honeydew plant they can wrap around each other and give each other support otherwise I'm still thinking about what kind of support system I want to give these honeydew vines it's day 77 and if the leaves look extra shiny to you that's because they are I sprayed Lysol all over them to kill white flies so here's an example of a dead white fly or some other kind of parasitic fly that I just sprayed and killed with Lysol um, I'd say there was about 10 to a dozen of these things that I saw flying around and crawling all over the surface of the soil. So they were quite abundant and before it was just, you know, I noticed one or two here and there in the past week and today I just saw a lot when I came home. So there were a lot of things that worried me, you know, this is the most robust plant. Its leaf is somewhat crumpled, it's not, you know, un completely unfurled and robust looking. You know, here's a leaf on another plant that doesn't look quite as robust as it should be and you know I noticed some tendrils just kind of hanging down and looking like they're dying. Um, that normally doesn't happen. Well, I haven't seen that until today. So here's an example of a tendril dying. It's very thinned out here and you know the end there doesn't look too good either. I think another problem here might be overwatering. So this is the edge of one of the largest leaves of the most robust plant. So prior to the one week mark of buying these plant spas, I basically inundated the surface of the soil from the top with a lot of water from a coffee pot, as you may recall in the last episode. So basically I did that because I figured I had in water for 72 hours and then I filled up the water tray at the bottom. So perhaps this overwatering is causing some of these larger leaves to die at the edges. So this just looks like a dead shoot ape colmera stem to me. It's sort of grayish and I can't distinguish anything. So here's an example of a leaf that's been sprayed with some Lysol on the top. Uh, not really on the bottom for any of these. I, I know that's where the white flies feed but you know, I tried looking under these leaves, I didn't see any insects clinging to the undersides and sucking juices. So unless there's a huge, you know, aphid infestation, and I think I would have seen that on the stems. Uh, I hope everything's fine there. So basically, the Lysol has, I don't really think it has oils in it, but you know, when you spray with any kind of substance like this, you know, you can see the compromised spots. Uh, they get wet because they're so thin. They look soaked because they're damaged, I think. So I think these white flies have been feeding a lot on these leaves. And I don't know what white fly larvae look like, but I know the adults suck the juices out of these plants. So they like to park on the undersides of leaves and on the stems. And I think this might be more evidence of insect damage. I'm pretty sure if I just sprayed Lysol normally onto healthy leaves it wouldn't look like this. Also a lot of cotyledons were doing great until now so they're basically all looking like this now. If you look over here this is the plant that was doing the best and it has cotyledons that are now dying. You know that one seems fine. Even this new plant 
has a uh, new cut lead-ins and it's kind of exhibiting signs of damage if my whole Lysol staining theory is right. You know, you just shouldn't see those places that look like what you would see in rotting leafy green vegetables, you know, in their fridge after they've just been sitting there at 4 degrees for a long time. Um, yeah, so I think this is basically insect damage. I'm not saying that there isn't any water water logging or water damage occurring from having water too heavily right before I activated the plant spa feature, but I think this is mostly due to insect damage. Another thing I just noticed is how these have become gray or brownish, uh, sort of signaling that they're dead. So these are once were these little like tufts of green that I didn't know what they were. You know, I mean, this is the tendril here that's drooped down and never found anything. But that used to be something living. I can show you what it looks like in a healthy plant. Yeah, so you should have a green tuft there that's basically alive. And, you know, I've seen signs of dying in... When I had this in the first 40 days or so in a glass pot with no sunlight, basically I saw some symptoms like this, but this time it seems to be a little different. I think there is a, well, we already saw that there's insect damage, and I, I saw the flies with my own eyes. Since I didn't sterilize the soil as I did with a small glass pot, I don't know if these white flies were already in the soil, or if there are other bugs and plant parasites in the soil or predators, you know, that could be really bad news. But uh, spraying Lysol should kill most of the things on the surface. And if water percolates down, if I water from the top again, you know, all the insecticides that I have should get through. But, you know, I haven't really used real insecticides per se. But, you know, anything soapy will just get into the spiracles of insects and kill them by uh, entering their hemolymph and disrupting their breathing systems. So any kind of soap water solution, Lysol is a good one, will do. So I don't know where these bugs came from, maybe they are in the dirt, maybe they came from outside just through the sliding door being opened just by a crack during the day. It's amazing how insects have such an amazing sense of smell and, and host plant detection. So. Somehow these insects found their way to this plant, even though it's on the third floor in the middle of nowhere, you know, relative to the outdoors. So just when I thought this whole project was safe, this happened. And I'm really frustrated that, you know, I can't just watch these plants grow and provide the sunlight I need and have this self-watering plant spa system going. So it's, it's pretty aggravating, but, you know, in my experience, uh, plants aren't, that easy to take care of you know a lot of problems can happen and they will okay it's only been about two hours since I last spoke but everything in the middle is kind of saggy now probably in part because I sprayed but you know things don't look good at all I mean when I look at the shoot apical meristem of this plant right here it kind of looks deadish to me and just a moment ago, despite all that Lysol spraying, I saw one white fly somewhere around here. And, you know, when I kind of blew on the soil to look for it again, I saw this tiny little bug. You know, it's, you know, bigger than a mite, but I don't quite know what it is. And I think something might be alive in here um, since I didn't sterilize the soil by baking. So something is eating at the roots. And you know, this all could have happened too. You know, when I put the the first transplant pot out on the balcony for two days, you know, a lot of insects could have come to lay eggs. So this is really ominous and I'm going to get some insecticide and spray it. I knew, I know I said I didn't want to use insecticide indoors, but uh, I really have no choice here. It looks like there's some kind of underground infection going on or infestation going on around here. Okay, so here's one thing I can use. It's a uh, bear advanced, you know, home pest control a spray. It's a nozzle spray. I haven't used this in ages. You know, I've had this for, I don't know, well, geez, six years maybe. So this is one of the things I can try. You know, if this doesn't work, 
I have another spray. I also have a fungicide that can work. So, um, yeah, the advantage of using any pesticide is basically it's it doesn't have the same drawbacks as say Lysol or you know I tried that disastrous experiment with isopropanol early in this series and this shouldn't have any of those side effects you know it basically won't do anything to plants and it doesn't have those toxic properties that can kill plants you know so you know here goes All the understory. You know, I don't know if the live salt does any damage. I don't have any indication that it does, but you know, I better make sure I cover all the ground here. And I think I might also just spray, uh, get some water, you know, let it soak into the ground and kill everything under there, too. Otherwise, if the problem is in the soil, then, you know, I'm just in big trouble here. You know, the roots will be essentially being eaten alive by all of these larvae or whatever kind of worms or uh, bugs that are in there. All right, so I think that's a pretty fair application of pesticide. And, uh, you know, I can also kind of spray the undersides of these leaves. So this kind of pesticide, it says, you know, you can just leave it alone for nine months and it'll kill everything. So yeah, I'm amazed the condition of everything deteriorated so fast. But uh, that's where we're at now. So I wouldn't take drastic measures if I didn't have to. Right now I'm going to attempt to salvage what's left of a really, really bad night. So basically I'm going to spray the leaves as best as I can with some clean distilled water and then wipe them with paper towels. So basically what I'm going to do is use my right hand for the spray bottle and left hand to touch leaves. Although I think seriously some of these uh, shoot apical marrow stems and new leaves are basically already dying and you know stuff's ready to break off not sure how much I can help this stuff Took off my gloves, so I think that's about as good as I can do. You know, I can um, kind of wash off now and hope for the best tomorrow. That seedling looks to be in terrible shape. You know, this is not really the response I expected from just spraying some Lysol. I think there's a lot more at work here. I'm definitely convinced these plants, at least all the leaves closer to the soil, were being infested by those white flies and that's what caused all the damage and maybe the Lysol made things worse. It's day 78 so yesterday day 77 I'm sure all of you bore witness to this unmitigated disaster that was spraying Lysol on uh, white fly infested honeydew vines. So this whole pot sort of around it has you know that kind of dead leaf dead vegetable smell and I'm gonna rip up what's basically gone for sure and just to make it more aesthetic and also to prevent any kind of rot from spreading around and I'm also going to put in some support columns for these uh, vines and tendrils to climb on so at least we'll have something to look forward to instead of a long hard recovery through this uh, slaughter.
that's bad. So I added these transparent support columns so that light can pass through during the day and it won't interfere with uh, photosynthesis. So it looks a lot nicer right now but truth be told I did cause some more damage just by doing this. So I caused this horrific injury basically by peeling away from the grain not with the grain so that caused a huge tear and that looks very compromised to me. I'd be surprised if this thing could survive. So as you just saw in the cleanup footage, I killed quite a number of white flies. I smashed two with my hands before this uh, footage began. So, you know, maybe I killed half a dozen white flies there. And that means the insecticide basically did nothing yesterday. Maybe it's expired. Maybe it's only meant for, you know, roaches, spiders, uh, things of the more common pest variety in houses that people want to kill. Okay, it's day 79 and you know more bad news has happened. The one I didn't expect to die or one of two that I didn't expect to die has died. If you look here it just started withering away. Various parts of the stem just became uh, sort of withered and desiccated. Okay, it's day 80 and as you can see things are in quite the sorry state um, this one is dead for sure uh, I don't know how that leaf and the meristem can hang on for so long but they still look okay I'm just gonna leave that there it was upside down originally but I decided to turn it upside down in case this plant has any kind of a fighting chance but you know all of those uh, stems that you see are just completely withered away so I think that's a death sentence for that plant. Uh, this plant is doing fine, you know, it's, it has, let's see, had cotyledons, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, you know, it's working on its seventh true leaf, and I'll zoom in a bit on that later, and this plant, you know, I tore it over here while removing a leaf, and that was another horrible mistake, but, uh, I think it'll survive. It has chemical burns from the Lysol, I think, on that, that, and that. But, you know, it's still working on its uh, shoot apical meristem there. It's still generating growth, amazingly. So for this most robust plant, things look good on the top, and I intend to keep things that way. I hope nothing bad happens again. But, um, you know, that's all I've done for this entire experiment is botch things and get these plants killed. I tried to uh, make this entire plant just lean against one of these plastic support columns and the tendrils haven't responded. I think this tendril is probably mature as is that one which is also dying at the end. So once these tendrils mature they basically just sort of hang limp and can't do anything. They can't wrap anymore and that's because you know these tendrils don't move in the traditional sense like animals with a limb. They basically grow longer on one side by having more cell divisions and cell growth on one side compared to the other side and that's how they kind of whip back and forth but once they're mature they've reached maximal length and they pretty much won't do anything from that point on 